All right, well, I've been building a number of small portable CW transceivers from QRP Labs. And uh, the original ones, like this one here, this is a QCX20, were built with a micro key on board. It's a micro switch that acts as a Morse code key. And uh, the, this case, for example, has the hole in it so that the micro switch sticks out and you can use it. But uh, the newer models, like the QCX Plus and uh, the new QCX Mini that I'm working on now, do not come with the built-on micro switch key. So that means you have to carry a key. And uh, uh, most keys are quite large. Um, and don't lend themselves to good portable operation. So I was thinking, well, what can I do? There are a few manufacturers that make keys for portable operation, but they're very expensive. Um, one, one of the best ones out there is about $150. Well, that's a lot of money. And the micro switch was serviceable. So I happen to have an extra micro switch. And I thought, well, what can I do to make a key out of that micro switch that would be portable? My idea was to put it in a little Altoids tin. A lot of my projects are built in Altoids tins. Uh, I drilled, I already have the holes drilled for this one, but I'm gonna show you what I did to make this work. So the first thing I had to think about was how was I going to mount the micro switch inside the Altoids tin. In order to do that, I had to make a little bracket. And I used a piece of uh, copper tubing, copper pipe, and just smashed it flat, cut it to size, and uh, marked it and drilled holes in it and uh, bent it so that I made a little L bracket that would fit right on the side of the micro switch, just like that. And uh, I have a couple of small screws that I pulled out of my junk box. Is it probably from tearing apart another piece of equipment or a computer or something? And uh, so I will screw the bracket to the, the side of the micro switch, decided to put it on the left side of the micro switch, and then I made sure that inside of the case, I drilled a couple of small holes in the bottom of the little Altoids tin case that I will bolt the L bracket to to hold the micro switch in position. I made it the bend angle right about just a little below the um, the pins that I had bent up, the base of the micro switch. The reason is you want them to be pretty close to the bottom of the Altoids tin, but you don't want to have the contacts touch the bottom of the Altoids tin. And you don't want it to be too high either, otherwise the lid of the tin will push the switch down and keep the switch in the down position. You don't want that. You want the switch to be compressed slightly but not pushed all the way down. If it's compressed slightly, that'll put a little tension on the micro switch and make it feel more like a real key. The other thing I did, just to be sure that there was no contact to the metal bottom, was I cut a little piece of a plastic card that I had laying around that I happened to like. It says, savings, it's alive on it. Uh, but I drilled a couple little holes in that so that, that match up with the bottom holes. That little plastic there will insulate from any accidents happening in the bottom of the uh, Altoids tin. Okay, I've bolted the micro switch inside of the case, which is the Altoids tin. After soldering the leads to the center and forward pin of the switch. And I put a eighth inch connector on the other end. All right, it's plugged in. And here we go. So that works, and uh, I'm going to put a couple of feet on the bottom just to stabilize it a little bit, but it looks like it's going to be a very good little portable, flame-proof micro-key.